Ludovic Stur is one of the most important personalities in modern Slovak history. He devoted his lifelong efforts to raise the Slovaks to the level of other developed European nations. Stur was fascinated by the knowledge that his Slovak ancestors built their own state, Great Moravia. Thanks to the work of the Thessalonian brothers Cyril and Methodius, Old Slavonic language was used as the literary and liturgical language of the Christian church in this territory. At the beginning of the 10th century, the Great Moravia disintegrated, and the territory of today's Slovakia was incorporated into the newly established multi-ethnic Hungarian kingdom. The Enlightenment reforms of Queen Maria Theresia and her son Joseph II significantly contributed to the strengthening of the national self-reflection of Slovaks in the second half of the 18th century. Under their influence, the state's feudal society began to change into a civic one. At the end of the 18th century, the confessionally divided Slovak national movement contributed to the formation of Slovaks as a modern nation. From 1787 to 1890, the Catholic priest and philologist Anton Bernolak created the first codification of the Slovak literary language based on contemporary, cultured West Slovakian dialect. To popularize Bernolak's Slavic language in education, Catholic scholars in 1792 founded the Slovak Learned Guild Society in Ternava. The evangelical stream based its position on the idea of the Czechoslovak literary, linguistic, and national unity and used both biblical and Slovakized Czech. Spoken Slovak was used in everyday communication. An important milestone was the establishment of the Department of Czech and Slavic Languages and Literature at the Evangelical Lyceum in Bratislava in 1803. It was established thanks to Professor Juraj Palkovich, who became its head for more than four decades. The foundations of Czechoslovak literary and national unity were developed by another representative of the Evangelical stream. Jan Kolar, with his poetic work entitled The Daughter of Slava, and by elaborating the concept of Slavonic mutuality and the vision of the Slav's future. His collections of Slavic folk songs were of great importance for the national development of Slovaks. The most acclaimed Bernalak poet, Jan Holy, published historical compositions Svetopluk and Cyrilo Metodiada, with themes from Great Moravia. The Sturs called Holy the Slovak Homer. In the mid-thirties of the 19th century, a group of young, nationally-oriented students, led by Ludovic Stur, profiled themselves at the Evangelical Lyceum in Bratislava. Stur was born October 28, 1815, in the family of the evangelical teacher Samuel Stur in Uhrovets, where he attended an elementary school under the guidance of his father. From 1827 to 1829, he was a student at the lower secondary school in Rav, Gyur, where, thanks to Professor Petz, he gained an interest in Slavic literature. In September 1829, he became a student of philosophy at the Evangelical Lyceum in Bratislava, where his elder brother Carol had been studying as well. During his studies at the Lyceum, Stur showed great admiration for Slavism, love for his native region and nature, a sense of social justice, and a deep interest in history. He was an active member of the Czechoslavic Society, which was a self-learning creative study group under the auspices of Professor Palkovich. At the beginning of 1834, he interrupted his studies for financial reasons and worked for several months as a scribe for the estate of Count Zai in Uhrovix. After returning to the Lyceum, he was selected as secretary of the Czechoslavic Society and later as an executive vice president. He was a great admirer of the work of Jan Kolar and the Bernolak poet Jan Holy. 
In 1836, he published his first poem, an ode to Hronka, in Hronka Journal. Together with his classmate Stibo Zok, they prepared a collection of literary works by students of the Lyceum, in which he published other poems. On April 24, 1836, he organized a memorable outing of students to Devine, where they paid tribute to the glorious past of their Slavic ancestors from the period of Great Moravia. They pledged to work and live for a better future for the Slavs, and went through a Slavic oath in which they adopted the Slavic name. Stur had previously used the name Velislav, Great Slav. In honor of this, he wrote the memorial poem entitled Devin, Dear Devin, which was later set to music by Alexander Moises. After graduating in June 1836, Stur continued his lectures at the Lyceum and led the Czechoslovak Society, which later transformed into the Institute of Czechoslovak Language and Literature as part of the department. He published his lyrical poems entitled Dumki Vecerni in the Czech magazine Kvieti. In 1838, he decided to pursue a university degree and enrolled to study theology in Halle, Germany. During his studies, he visited the regions of the Lusatian Serbs, and on his way back from Halle, he spent time in Prague, and then in Hradec Karalove with the publisher Jan Pospisil. Stur developed a romantic relationship with Pospisil's daughter, Maria. After returning to Bratislava, Ludovic thought about marriage, but his love for his homeland prevailed. He sent a poem as a farewell to Maria Pospisilova, called Farewell. Stur asked his fellows not to marry, as he saw marriage as an obstacle and a burden at work for the nation. After returning from his studies in Germany, Stur vigorously opposed the growing Magyarization, which was strongly promoted in the evangelical church, including schools, by its inspector general, Count Karol Zai. He was the initiator and author of recourses handed over to the ruling court in Vienna and published the papers entitled the complaints and grievances of the Slavs in Hungary against the illegal actions of the Hungarians, and the 19th century and Magyarism. Zai's supporters, including Ludovic Kosciut, urged the convent of the Evangelical Church to forbid Stur from lecturing and definitively removed him from the department on New Year's Eve, 1843. In protest of the dismissal of Stur, Part of the Slovak Lyceum students went, in March 1844, to study at other schools, mostly in Levoča. Their departure is associated with the creation of the Slovak national anthem, Lightning Over the Tatras. Following his forced departure from the Lyceum, Stur worked on the editing of the journal Tatranka and focused on codifying works of the Slovak language. His goal was to unite Slovaks based on a common standard language, which would become an integral part of and an effective tool for educating the people and uplifting their culture. The creation of a literary Slovak language was based on cultural language used in central Slovakia and agreed upon at meetings by Ludovic Stur, Mikhail Miloslav Hodja, and Josef Miloslav Horban, at Horban's vicarage in Hropoke, from July 11th to July 16th, 1843. This idea was approved by the most significant Bernalak poet, Catholic priest Jan Holy, whom they visited at Dobra Voda on July 17th, 1843. Codification works of the new Slavic language, the Slovak dialect, or the necessity to write in this dialect, and The Teaching of the Slovak Language, were published by Stur in 1846. The spelling of the words in the new Slovak language was based on the phonetic principle. Stur's Slovak gained many supporters, 
but opponents as well. The biggest critic was Jan Kolar. Finally, at the fourth meeting of the Tatrin Association in Chaktitze on August 1847, both evangelicals and Catholics agreed on the adoption of Stur's new Slovak as the standard language of Slovaks. Another strategic goal of Stur was the publication of a Slovak political newspaper. To obtain a permit, it was necessary to pay a high deposit and comply with censorship restrictions. He managed to obtain it following another request addressed in January of 1845 directly to the ruler Ferdinand I. Slovak national newspaper began publishing on August 1, 1845, and was released twice a week. Once every two weeks, they published a literary supplement to the paper called Ural Tatranski. Numerous correspondents of Slovak localities from all over Hungary contributed to the newspaper. Important topics included the organization of the temperance societies and Sunday schools. In editorials, Stur analyzed many areas of society and made suggestions for their improvement. He devoted much effort to issues of education, the status of the common people, the abolition of serf duties, the creation of conditions for the development of trades and industry, the promotion of ideas of national and civic equality. In the newspaper, Stur formulated a national political program for the emancipation of Slovaks and the modernization of society called Our Hopes and Requests. He presented it at the Hungarian parliament as a deputy elected for the free royal town of Zvolen. Stur presented himself in the parliament as a mature, democratically-minded politician and a great speaker. Mikolaj Ostroluski, the deputy governor of the Zvolen county, helped him obtain a parliamentary seat. With Ostroluski's daughter, Adela, Stur developed a close friendship and a mutual respect. At the beginning of 1848, a revolution, which quickly spread from France to other countries, affected the fate of European nations. In March, it spread to Vienna and Pest. The Hungarian parliament, which met in Bratislava, under revolutionary pressure, passed laws to abolish servitude and the payment of church tax. Ludovic Stur and other Slovak representatives did not consider these changes to be sufficient. They organized popular rallies and petitions, which advocated for the requirement of national rights for the Slovaks. These activities culminated in the acceptance of the requests of the Slovak nation at a meeting of Slovak representatives at the parish of Mikhail Miloslav Hoja in Liptovsky Mikolaus. They were publicly proclaimed in Ondrashovske Spa on May 11, 1848. The requests were a comprehensive national program of the Slovaks, which demanded the democratization of society, universal voting rights for men, removal of remnants of feudal privileges, enshrining equality of nations and reconstructing Hungary into a federal country. The requests were met with strong oppositions from the representatives of the Hungarian Revolution and the government who sought to transform the multi-ethnic Hungary into the Hungarian national state. The authorities issued an arrest warrant for the leaders of the Slovaks, Stur, Hurban, and Hoxha. However, all three managed to escape. Stur traveled under dramatic circumstances, from Liptovsky Mikolaus to his brother Karol in the city of Modra. At night, a woodsman named Veshtik accompanied him from his hut to the town of Yoblanova. Three days later, he crossed the border into Angern, Austria, and traveled by train to Prague. In Prague, he joined with Horban and Hoxha as they took part in the Slavic Congress. At the Congress, Stur presented himself as an excellent speaker and an ardent supporter of the cooperation of the Slavic nations. After the Congress and the suppression of the uprising in Prague, Stur and Horban traveled to Croatia. They collaborated with the Ban of Croatia, Josip Jelicic, in preparation of the uprising. 
Stur managed to obtain significant assistance for the Slovak insurgents from the Serbian prince, Mikhail Obrenovich. At the end of August 1848, he and Horban returned to Vienna to support recruitment of the Slovak Volunteer Corps. The Slovak National Council was officially founded in Vienna on September 16, 1848. Two days later, Slovak volunteers and the National Council moved by train from Vienna to Moravia. The volunteers swore allegiance to the emperor and the Slovak National Council on a three-color white, blue, and red flag embroidered by Johanka Hrebendova Borikova from Verboce with Slovak girls. After the end of the celebration, the almost 600-member volunteer corps crossed the Moravian-Slovak border and captured the town of Mijava, which became the first residence of the Slovak National Council. On its behalf, on September 19th, Ludovic Stur declared Slovakia's independence from the Hungarian government. However, the Slovak uprising in September 1848 was suppressed due to insufficient organization and armaments. Despite the defeat, it was of great historical importance. The Slovaks proved that they knew how to fight for their rights and for their statehood. In the following two volunteer expeditions, they sided with Imperial Vienna and continued to fight against the Hungarian government. During the second winter expedition, Stur and Hurban helped run the volunteer corps, organized public meetings, and established new local authorities. In a petition to monarch Francis Joseph I, submitted on March 20, 1849, in Olomouc, they asked for the Slovaks to be equated with other nations of the monarchy and to separate Slovakia from Hungary. Furthermore, they sought to establish it as an independent unit with its own executive power and parliament subordinate to the imperial institutions in Vienna, to establish Slovak as the official language, and remove Hungarian officials they received some general assurances from the monarch, but in the end, their requests remained unheard. Stur was appointed to the People's Commissar in support of the third summer volunteer expedition. After the defeat of the Hungarian troops at Vilagos on August 13, 1849, Slovak political representatives organized a petition campaign for the creation of a special crown country, Slovakia. On October 10th, Stur took part in an audience of Slovak representatives with the monarch, where they again heard only promises. The ceremonial dissolution of the Slovak Volunteer Corps took place on November 21st in Bratislava with the participation of Stur, Horban, and Hoja. The celebration symbolically ended one chapter of his life in which Stur demonstrated his admirable ability to respond to the challenges of the revolutionary era, his political maturity, leadership qualities, and bravery. After the end of the revolution, Stur endured many unfortunate and sad times. In 1850, Jan Kolar promoted Old Slavonic as the official language in Slovakia, and the Hoja Hatala reform changed the spelling of Stur Slovak. In January 1851, Ludovic's brother, Karol, died, leaving seven small children, and Stur decided to move to Modra to help raise them. In Modra, he lived in a rental apartment in the so-called Schnell House. He focused on scientific and writing activities, which resulted in three important works, the Book of Poems, Chants and Songs, the book On National Songs and Legends of Slavonic Tribes, and the political science work entitled Slavs and the World in the Future, first published in Moscow in 1867. In the last, Stur analyzed tendencies of European development, sharply criticized the West, and depicted future developments in which, according to him, the Slavs, headed by Russia, would play a decisive role. Ludovic enjoyed walks to the Holombetska Valley in the part of Modra where a huge chestnut tree stood. Just before Christmas, 1855, he went to the district of Schnaudi for the last hunt of the year. 
As he jumped over a ditch, he fell. His rifle fired, and the shots penetrated his left thigh. The wounded Ludovic was taken to the Emres house, to his sister-in-law, where he lived in great pain for three weeks. He died of sepsis on January 12, 1856. The funeral of Ludovic Stur was dignified and solemn. He was buried in the cemetery in Modra, next to his brother, Carol, and the priest, Pavel Zoch. Numerous monuments throughout Slovakia commemorate Stur's immense importance to the Slovak nation. Many institutions, streets, squares, and a city are named after him. With his intellect, zeal, dedication, and perseverance, Stur inspired many other personalities in the national movement. Through his literature and pedagogical activities, his followers, Stur's, included the great poets Andrei Sladkovich, Janko Kral, Samo Chalupka, and Jan Boto. Important prose writers Jan Kalinchak, Gustav Zechenter Laskomerski, close collaborators in the Slovak national newspaper Peter Kelner Hostinsky, Bohus Nasak Nezabudov, Mikolaus Dohnani, Janko Stur, creator of the Slovak anthem Janko Matushka, pedagogue and Stur's friend Stibo Zok, collector and editor of Slovak fairy tales Pavel Dobšinsky, painter Peter Mikhail Bohun, officers in the Slovak Volunteer Corps Jan Francisi Rimavsky, William Paulini Toth, Stefan Marko Daxner, and Mikolaus Ferienczyk, from which important figures of the Slovak national movement originated. The Slovak national movement followed the ideas of Ludovic Stur and at the assembly of Slovak representatives in Turciansky Svati Martin on June 6th and 7th, 1861, they adopted the political program Memorandum of the Slovak Nation. In it, they demanded the abolition of discrimination against non-Hungarian nations, the constitutional recognition of the origin of the Slovak nation, and the delimitation of its territories. In 1863, the Slovaks managed to establish a nationwide cultural institution in Martin, Matisa Slovenska, which became the center of Slovak national life. The work and ideas of Ludovic Stur have survived to this day.